All right, so uh, I'll open the index. I'll open the My JavaScript, both in Notepad++. A oh, quick reminder, if you haven't done so yet, take a moment to mute your devices. If you haven't muted your phones and such, please mute your devices. It was so long ago, two days ago, I need to remind myself where the app is at the moment. And also, well, I need to populate it with a little bit of data, at least my user account. Uh, so if you haven't done so, run the project, create an account. Again, I'm just keeping it super simple, a at a.com. That still works. I'm going to sign in. That still works. I see then the PG Home screen, save comic, view comic. We haven't gotten to that yet. I go to my options screen. That's there. I log out. Confirms I want to log out. I'll say OK. That goes back to log out. And then I can sign up or log in again. I had another account already earlier, victor at campus.com. Log in with that, and I'm in. So that still works like we did on uh, Tuesday, or it should still work. Uh, I log in, I log out. The, the thing that I want to then do the polish for this is I wanted to remember that I've logged in. Uh, if I am to close the project and run it again completely from um, from scratch like that, it says, "Okay, welcome. Log in again." Well, I don't, I don't want that. I want it to remember that I've logged in, and I want it to automatically take me to PG Home. I especially want that when it's on a real device. Uh, the person's going to download the app, create an account. They're going to sign into their database and I don't want to annoy them every time that they load up the app I need to sign in again so let's set up our system for it to remember that you've logged in and automatically take you to PG home when the app loads up I'm in PG welcome I want it to remember I've logged in and take me to PG home this is going to happen in several different ways um, the main first part of it in the JavaScript file, we need to go to the part of our app that lets us log in. So let's go find our function to log in. And what I say about let's go find our function to log in, I want you to get used to using the find feature of your code editor. We're using Notepad++, of course, but some of you that prefer brackets or Sublime or whatever, you also want to visual code. You want to get used to also using Control F to find your code. Right now it's only 192 lines. But when we get up to 800 lines, it's going to be annoying for us to scroll and scroll and find what I'm looking for by using Control F to find. It's up on the search menu as well, find. By using simply find, this will also help us jump to anywhere in our code, especially when we've got hundreds of lines of code. What's the name of the function that lets us log in? Fn login. Like that? Technically, no. Mine has capital L, capital I. But that's OK, because I don't have match case turned on. This is good enough for me to help it find my function login if I press enter. There it is, jumped all the way to line 110. I was on line 1. I did control F and I'm searching for function login. If I said match case, then it would not find it, obviously, because in line 110 it's FN capital L capital I. And I bring that up because sometimes you do need to find some word like I don't know, log in. And it has to be the version of the word with capital letters. Or it's a version that is uh, very uniquely spelled. And if I have 20 lines of code that say example, but only one of them has a lowercase e, if I 
don't match case, it'll find all 20 copies of example. With match case, it should only find the example listed like that. All of that is simply to say that get used to using find to be able to quickly jump to different parts of your code. So at approximately line 110, that's where our login function exists. And we've got our if statement. If the user's email does not exist, make a pop-up that says so. Or else they do exist, so go to the next if else. If the passwords match, they match, great, welcome, take them home. Or else they don't match, give them an error message. So here's where we have to deal with this. At approximately line 131, where the second if else statement is, this is the one that takes care or, or checks does the password match. This does a few things. It, once we've confirmed the password matches, we write the person's email in the footer. Remember, we did that. Then we move them over to, we change them over to PG Home. Two things happen. That section is going to need to do two or, or three or four things eventually. Every time we log in, we also want to keep track of who has logged in. So it's going to be in that section. Uh, we, need to track, we need to keep track of which database. We haven't talked about databases yet, but that'll happen there as well. But that if else block right there. Let's um, write a note at uh, line 137 to do initialize database. That'll come later. We'll leave the note right here because I know it's coming eventually. What we need to do later is initialize the database. We haven't talked about databases. We can't do it, but we'll give ourselves a note. Also, to do update on screen the latest data and in, uh, initial initialize sorry so that's going to be two things at least two more things that we'll get to eventually we haven't talked about databases we need to activate the database that'll be later and then we need to update the data those two are actually separate uh, separate actions so we'll just add the note there and we'll do it later What we will do right now is create a local storage cookie keeping track of who is logged in. We can use local storage again to keep track of simple data, in this case who is logged in. We're using local storage to keep track of one or 100 users, their own account, their email, their password. And we're also going to use local storage to keep track of which of those one or 100 users is currently logged in. And the big idea, once again, is that it's, the, um, it's, it's based on the person's email address. This little variable here has been very useful for us so far. Uh, whatever they've typed into the login box, we've captured their email, we're storing it temporarily, and we're using it several different ways. We're going to use it one more way. We're going to say here, local storage, lowercase l of course, that's the, the proper JavaScript spelling, uh, set item. We're going to set a new cookie, we're going to create a new local storage object, set item. And sometimes we go back and forth when I teach the class. We go back and forth on choosing the name of this thing right here. This time in quotes, is logged in. You know what? Let, let, this semester, let's call it who is logged in. That might make a little more sense. We're going to make a local storage object. We're going to make a cookie called who is logged in. That might make more sense. So the data 
inside of that cookie is the email of the person currently logged in. Temp val in email login. So whatever they have typed as their email, as they're attempting to log in, this is enough for us to store who is logged in. Well, the person that last logged in their email. So there's a cookie being set in our app called who is logged in. And the value in that cookie is that person's email. That isn't going to help us to determine when someone logs out, when someone logs in, whose database to load, and anything unique about the particular user. Another note, it's based on the last logged in email address. And that would make sense, wouldn't it? Uh, it would keep. It would keep. It would be tr keeping track of who was the very last person that went through the login screen. So it's their email. Okay, so when a person logs in, the who is logged in cookie stores their email. Therefore, when we log out, we need to remove that. That person is no longer logged in. So in our function log out, we need to do something similar, but instead clear that data. No longer have the person's email in this cookie because they've logged out. They're no longer the person that is that who is logged in. Let's go to our function log out. Where would you say, try to guide me on the line number, where would you say we might do that local storage setting? What line number might you say? 162, 162, close. Maybe our numbers are a little different, but maybe. And anyone else? 166. Um, yep, you were both uh, very, very close. Yes, if you said 162, yes, it's going to be somewhere close to the switch. You were a little bit more closer in that 166. Yes, it's in the case of true. Are you sure you want to log out? True, log me out. Everything else they didn't log out. So yes, it's going to be inside of the case of true inside of the switch. Finding ex the exact line, well, let's think about it logically. Um, we've got some console output, which is you know only important for you as a developer. We've got uh, move us over or change us from the current screen to PG welcome. We've got reset the form, and then we've got end of, of, the, of the case. So anywhere inside of this case, of true should work what we're about to do. But to be safe, I'm going to do it before we actually move out of the move away from the screen. I really don't think it matters where we put it in this case, but I want to uh, just early on right away um, set the data that we've logged out. Same idea. Well, let's do the note. Uh, set our local storage cookie uh, to empty because a user is no because the current user is no longer logged in technically empty and null might not be the same thing I'll, I'll note both of them but now we're going to set our local storage, it, who is logged in, to, to no one. So we started off as usual, local storage dot set item. In quotes, the name of our cookie. 
Uh, what did I call that cookie again? Who is logged in? Yep, doing it very obviously. Who is logged in? That's the name of the cookie. Who is logged in? Make sure it's spelled exactly the same as before, or technically we would be creating a brand new cookie spelled differently. If the one at the top I called it capital a, a capital W for who is logged in, and then I set this one as a lowercase w, it's going to create two different cookies. It, it, it does, it's not programmed in a way that it knows they're both the same thing because capital letter W is different than lowercase w. Comma, the data that we're setting to the cookie is open quote, end quote. Nothing in between. That's when I said over here, set it to empty. Set it to nothing, set it to null. This is an opening and a closing quote, no space, because technically that's not empty. An empty space is not nothing. An empty space does take up one byte of data. It is ASCII character 32. It is a code deep down in the bowels of the computer. That is something. So no space, nothing in between the quotes. That's null. That, that's nothing. There's no data in that cookie now. So you see the logic of it, when we're logging in, we're setting the who is logged in to their email. When we're logging out, we're clearing it, we're emptying it. And that's basically then the code to empty a cookie. Not to delete the cookie, for that we have local storage dot remove item, or delete item, whatever they call it. We have a way to delete the cookie. We don't actually want to delete it, we want to use that cookie and either save the email or remove the email, but not delete the cookie. So, yes? Um, and what would be the advantage of saving, not to um, When I developed the app, I'm sure I had a good answer. I don't remember at the moment, but I suppose maybe a little bit also for like efficiency. It takes a, perhaps a little bit more RAM to create the object rather than to change the object. Um, there's probably a better answer I could give you. I have to look it up, but uh, I don't think functionally for the user there'd be any issue between the two. I just kind of figured on this solution and it seems to work, so I went with it. Possibly, I'd have to look up the specification if local storage allows that. Um, one way to figure that is to try it and check if you get errors. Um, so possibly we, we could set it to null. That might be slightly different than, you know, there's null, there's undefined, and a couple of other ways. So possibly. But again, this is when I developed the app. This seemed to work. There might be other ways to do it. We could uh, explore that. So uh, this is exactly kind of related to our talk yesterday about the copyrights. As I said, I'm putting out this code open source, basically. Take my code, do whatever you want with it. You can give me credit about it if you want or not, if you make a great app and get rich. Uh, and you're able to change it however you want. So sometimes throughout the class, we do figure out different ways to do things. And uh, it's kind of living code, so we change it as the semesters go on. Okay, so we have a way to keep track of when we log in, who's logged in, and when we log out, we clear that. Well, I want that as soon as the app starts, I want it to check that. I want it to check, is anyone logged in? Yes, take them to PG Home. Who is logged in is empty. Okay, if they haven't logged in, leave them here. So we're going to do a conditional statement. If who is logged in has an email, automatically take them to PG Home. Or else, who is logged in has no email, keep them here. So based on our code so far, what line number might you say that would happen at? Back in login. Back in login, approximately what line number is that? I think you said 133 or 131. 131, 133, um, not quite that one already. Ha the login function only happens when a person's trying to log in. I want to check even before they try. 
Ah, all the way in the beginning. All the way in the beginning, perfect. So, not all the way at the beginning, but near the beginning, yes. Very beginning here before very much happens. All of these functions over here don't happen, they are not triggered until someone initiates that. Someone clicks submit, someone clicks login, whatever. These don't happen until there's, a, uh, there's an event that is triggered. We need to do something even earlier before um, the person has to try to really do much. Um, for us, we're going to do this right before, right after the creation of our variables, but before the creation of our first functions. So I'm going to create a brand new little section over here. Um, I'm going to borrow this right here, just so that it looks the same. I'm going to say, first thing, check if anyone is currently logged in. And then I'm also going to write a longer comment right here, so I'll break this into the multiple line comment. Conditional statement to check if a user is logged in as soon as the app loads. If if a um, if an email address is detected, send them to PG Home or else keep them at PG Welcome. The following is not in a function because we want it to execute or run right away without user interaction. All of these other ac actions of our app have been in a function. They didn't happen until some trigger happened, a click by the user. Well, what we want will not be in a function. It will be out by its own, meaning JavaScript will process it. It'll get to that line, start to do all of that, and then continue after this block. So actually, because I've got that comment there, I want to call this section uh, logged in user checker. Again, it's all comments, whatever you want to call, what, however you want to write your comments is fine. Uh, this is going to be our area that is our logged in user checker. And there's my long comment explaining to myself, so I changed that, the name of that section. All right, so I'm saying conditional statement to check if a user is logged in. If true, send them to PG Home. If false, keep them here. We have enough of the knowledge already to do this. I could tell you right now, go ahead and do this. I won't do it. I won't, uh, throw, you to, I won't throw you into the water just yet. We will do it. So how do I start this off? What's the skeleton of a conditional statement? Exactly. If, parentheses, curlies, else. Other languages explicitly say the or else part of it. JavaScript doesn't. If else. Other languages do say or else. Good idea to write our note right here. And if else to check if user is logged in. The way we're going to have this is uh, in the in the first. It could be either or. What is true? What is false? 
But the way uh, that I want to do this is that under the if portion will be no user logged in. Under the else will be a user is logged in. And we'll say what who that user is in a moment. For my skeleton is I'm going to check for something for true or false. If a user is logged in, if we if we meet this condition, the if portion will happen of true, which is no users logged in. Nothing else will really need to happen. They're not logged in. Keep them here in PG. PG welcome. The else part is the interesting part. This is the part that, that then detects, OK, someone is logged in. Let us then move the user over to PG, PG, uh, PG home. The condition that we're going to check here is if local storage dot get item, parentheses, let's go look in this cookie. Either the cookie is going to have a valid email or not. That's the if else. Either this or that. The name of the cookie holding who is possibly logged in is who is logged in. Yes, who is logged in. So right here we're just saying, get me the data in this cookie. Let's compare it equals 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 open close quotes when we do log out we do local storage dot set item who is logged in comma quotes we are clearing the data from the cookie if we detect the data is empty no one is logged in or else there's something in that cookie, someone is logged in. At this very early stage here, we can start to test this. Um, save it and run it. Open up your F12 developers console right away. See if you get any errors, which we'll fix, of course. But see if you get any of this happening. See if you, if you have created an account so far today probably it'll say you've logged in. If you haven't created an account today, it'll probably say no users logged in. If you logged in, if you created an account and logged in but never logged out, it'll probably say you're logged in. But if you created the account and you logged in and you logged out like I did, it'll probably say you're not logged in. Let's go ahead and test that for a moment. The code's not done yet, of course, but let's should be able to test this as soon as we run it. Let's see here. I'm going to open up my console. A user is logged in. When I was demoing this a little bit earlier, I logged in, I created an account. Um, a at a.com and then I logged out and then you, you should have noticed I then logged in with Victor at campus.com I never logged out I started the lecture so it is detecting at some point I have logged in to fully test this and we'll do help in a moment but to fully test this I'm gonna log I'm gonna literally log in because I know that it thinks I've logged in or what did I do a at a.com Log in a at a dot com. I'm going to log out. I'm going to run it again. No user is logged in. So it should work at the very least like that. 
you saw that I had logged in a moment ago. It remembered me. I logged out, I closed it completely, I ran it, and it says no one is logged in. Again, to test it again, I'm going to log in. Victor at campus.com. Okay, I'm logged in. I'm going to close it. I'm going to run it again. Open the console right away. A user is logged in. I'm going to go to my logout button. I'm going to log out. Confirm. I'm going to close it completely. Run it again. F12. No users logged in. So it should be detecting that. Let me pause right there. Does everyone get that feedback before we go on? Yes. Yes. So it should be detecting something. You want to need a little help? All right. So if it's working at the very least like that, we're on the right track. We are using the local storage to keep track of who's logged in or not. Um, I've found, again, through the years of, of doing this class and testing it, depending on the browser, depending on the device, only checking for emptiness is not enough. Some browsers do actually then mark it as null or undefined. So it seems to be safer to check, is it empty and is it null? And is it undefined? So in between the uh, parentheses of if, I then want to add, not actually not and or, I want to check if the local storage cookie is empty or if it's undefined or if it's null, no one's logged in. And in JavaScript to write or, we write two vertical pipe characters. Those are backslashes, where you do shift backslash. Backslash, of course, is above the enter, below the backspace. This, of course, is a slash or a forward slash. We don't want that. Backslash leans back, and shift backslash gives you a vertical pipe. We need two of them, no spaces in between. It looks like there's a space, but that's a space. No space in between them. That means or. Check if this or this or this. If any of these three possibilities, uh, we hit upon any of these three possibilities, they all mean you're not logged in. So we need to then also check local. Now, before we write this, I think it's a little more readable if I press Enter right here to move that to the next line. Because I'm going to say three things that are basically this three times. It's going to be really long. It's not going to fit on one screen. I pressed Enter before I continued into the next line. So you can do that or not. You can keep writing. But I'm going to press Enter to break it to the next line, because it's going to look very similar to what's already up there. You can even copy and paste. But this time, it's going to say equals 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 undefined. Again, be very careful you don't lose these curly braces and parentheses. Be very careful. Local stores get it if it's empty, or if it's undefined, or if it's null. You need another or. Once again, it's going to be a long <coughs> line. I'm going to press Enter here to break it to the next line. And then do local stores get item equals 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 null. And that one I will save myself some effort and copy and paste. So on the next line is equals 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 null. We've got it right there. So now I'm checking for three things at once. If it's this or this or this. And the purpose of this is based on the different web browsers, the different devices, they all kind of check this data or store this empty data slightly different. 
and uh, throughout the years it seems that this is seems to be the best way to confirm that the cookie is empty so we can add the note here we check three different ways of storing nothing just to be sure different browsers devices do it differently So this happens very early on in our code. We check the who is logged in. We've hit one of these. Therefore, no one's logged in. Else gets skipped. The code continues. Keeps us on PG welcome. We have nothing to do here, but I'll just note it. No one is logged in. So keep us on PG welcome. Someone is logged in. So move us to PG home. Well, this is going to be sort of like uh, the part of our function login, the one we, where we confirm the, the user's email exists and then the user's password matches. We did two things, and we need to, to do eventually two more things. So to also keep our notes complete here, to do, how did I word it, initialize database. Also said update the data on screen. We're, we're going to get to those eventually, just like I said uh, for the other uh, for the function login. That's going to need to be done here automatically without any feedback. Well, we're going to change from the current screen to show them PG Home. PG Home where their email is at the bottom. So we also need to check. We also need to set here. Put their email at the bottom, just like for P for function login. We'll do that one first. Uh, we had dollar l uh, user email dot html. Remember, we want to show their email down on the footer. So anywhere where there is the user email class. Let's write some HTML. <coughs> For the person that is currently logged in, and we were doing it as tempval, blah, 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 don't write this. We were doing it as tempval in email, whatever it's called. But it, it's not going to work here this time, because this tempval in login email is um, is created and exists in function login. Right in function login, we created the local scope variable temp val in email login. This is what's keeping track of who logged in. But this variable only exists in this function. We cannot use the values in this variable anywhere outside the function. So this this that we used previously to write the person's email down at the bottom with that variable won't work. If only there was a way to confirm or check who is currently logged in. Look at that, local storage.getItem who is logged in. 
that is also in a global sense storing who is currently logged in so that's the part that I'm going to copy and paste into here let's write some HTML into this class what we're writing is the email address of who is logged in So I just copied and pasted it from the start of that if statement. So here's the example where I can show two views of the same same code. So what I'm saying here on line 160 when we've successfully logged in write their email address in the footer. We might also need to do it early on if the person never passes through function login. Now it looks like uh, we'll probably also need to add the two lowercase uh, because we've stored the data as uh, uppercase, probably. Okay, so that's the complete line. In this class, let's write some HTML. Let's write the person's email address. Oops, wait a minute. Not quite. That goes here. Uh, let's get who is logged in. Let's get their email dot to lowercase, turn it lowercase. Let's write that into that class. Write the, per write the user's email in the footer. And then change the current section to PG home. Well, that came from, I mean, that code is the same as the other code we, um, we used previously to move us from one screen to another. Remember this, we had the, the very unique selector here. We're selecting the basically the current screen colon mobile dash page container dot page container. Parameters here we change comma where to quotes pound. Don't forget the pound there. PG home comma curly braces the options the animation transition options you know, actually for this one in my notes I don't have the the optional options there I left it without the options because the default animation is a fade. So once it detects that uh, someone is logged in, it will change us from PG welcome to PG home with the default fade animation. You could set the transition of flip as we've been doing, but um, I, I want to leave it as fade. to complete what I had the console here. A user is logged in, colon. I want to say who is logged in. So um, I want to show the person's email of who is currently logged in. Line 61 is the answer. Local storage 
dot get item who is logged in. So I can copy and paste that. So uh, I'm not sure if we've done this yet. Uh, have we used the plus symbol in our console log yet? Anyone remember if we've done that? If we haven't done that with the plus symbol here, it's doing concatenation. It's like adding write this part and then write the following part. So it's going to say the part here in quotes in my console that will always be the same. A user is logged in, colon. And then it will change based on who is logged in. So that part after the plus here is not in quotes, so that it is dynamic, so that it changes to show you who is logged in. <clears throat> At this point, we can test it. Let me confirm mine works. <laughs> First of all, when I launch my code, I open up the console right away. I had not been logged in, so OK, it kept me there. No user logged in. I'm going to log in. So you saw. I am logged in. My email's down here. I'm going to close it completely. I'm going to run it again. And two things will happen. One good, one bad. One good is a user is logged in. And it's showed my email from the last time that I logged in that you just saw. The bad part of it anticlimactically is this won't fully work until we're on a device for some reason. So if you're testing this on Chrome or Firefox, if you get this result, it's working. It's not actually <clears throat> going to move you from PG, um, uh, PG welcome to PG home yet. Anticlimactically, I'm sorry. Blame the browsers. When we get to the real device, it will work. But to confirm it's working so far, I would be looking here. I would be seeing, it does see, a user's logged in and the last email that I used. Again, to, come to, to test it even further, I'm going to create a brand new email right now. Batman at Wayne.tech. And I'm going to create the password. I'm going to create the account. I'm going to join it. Batman at Wayne.tech. I'm going to... Uh, log in. Okay, I am logged in. It says right there, Batman. Everyone can confirm I logged in as Batman, right? You know my secret identity. So I'm going to close it. I'm going to run it. It doesn't change me to the next screen, I know, but it says the user is logged in, Batman. So it should give you that sort of Output, it doesn't automatically animate. You will still need to log in yourself, unfortunately, until next week. When we do put it on real devices, then it will work. It will automatically take you from PG Welcome to PG Home. This is the last piece of the puzzle for the moment regarding the login, logout. And it's coming along pretty well. Question? Let me do it this way. So, um, question? Yes. So, um, this is the last uh, piece of the lecture that I wanted to do. Uh, before the assessment. We're going to take our break. Uh, you want to confirm this works. Uh, after the break, then I'll have the assessment for you. And uh, we'll do that. So at 6.25, we'll be back at 6.35. Confirm it all works, and then we will go on. Uh,